wonderful being here. Thank you all for, for coming. Today we have a great session. Uh, we are going to, no, let me tell you actually what we're not going to do. We're not going to go deep into why Crossplane is awesome, because simply it is, or why you should use it. Matthias will talk about it later, but the main goal to, of today's session is to show you uh actually to acknowledge that uh, world existed before crossplane that you probably have already your infrastructure and services and other stuff defined in other tools and what we are going to try to do is to show how you can transition from whatever you're using today today we are focused on terraform uh into control planes specifically control planes with crossplane I have a uh, great uh, three people with me here that know more, much more about the subject than I do. So I will let them speak instead. And as it always starts, every single meeting, every single event, it always starts with the product manager. So uh, Matthias, you want to kick it off? I don't know if you want to introduce yourself quickly and then tell us about what we're going to listen to today. Yeah. Thank, thanks, Victor. Uh, I'm not sure if it all, everything starts with the product manager, but I guess this time it, it does. So uh, Matthias uh, Lupkin, one of the PMs at, at Upbound. And uh, yeah, uh, just very briefly, we're the company behind uh, Crossplane. And we're, we're helping uh, folks, our customers to, you know, uh, introduce Upbound in, a, you know, whatever, whatever enterprise fashion that 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 meets. And we're building, you know, different products, different services and different building blocks that are, you know, most uh, wanted and, you know, ready to be used in production. So um, I guess something that that I do want to like set, set a context a little bit of what, what we're doing and why, why we think this is exciting today is that um, the way that we are approaching, um, you know, needs of, 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 of today's world is uh, that we think, um, you know, you know, a good, good amount of people need to provide an internal cloud platform. And by that, what we mean is something that, you know, sits inside your organization and acts like your kind of internal cloud to you, right? So instead of using a specific cloud, you are basically, our idea or the approach that we're taking or advocating for is that you have something that something needs to be defined and, you know, can be customized, can be different, but we have this something that that acts as a, a mediator in between and we call this a control plane um, or a cloud platform that's uh, built that's built upon a control plane and it's you know has a couple of properties and i think it's 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 um you know i'm not going to go through this victor is right right but it's basically just awesome right it's 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 the way that we we think it's it it, it should be run but one thing that is that is important is um you know if you're coming from a different world i think it's important to understand that um the way this thing is built upon, right, is built upon Kubernetes and the core mechanics um, of, of, of Kubernetes. So if, if, if you look a little bit at it, right, um, uh, you know, uh, of, of like the little bit of like the, the tech stack uh, that, that we're using is that that uh, we're building upon Kubernetes and, you know, a little bit like, uh, you know, separated here, the different different parts of Kubernetes So Kubernetes runtime to run the workloads, the, the machinery, for the CRDs and open persistence, uh, the controller runtime for the reconciliation. Long story short, right? We're building on this like really awesome foundation um, of building a control plane runtime, um, and Crossplane just sits on top of it and and you know acts uh, makes external APIs available, right, uh, to manage your your infrastructure out there, and you know. To get this running, right? There's different type um, of of providers that you need. There's you know a couple of providers that the, that the community has. There's a couple of providers that we from Upbound also open source we provide to the community, and then you kind of like build your custom APIs on top of it, right? And um, it's for for some kind of internal cloud platform. You can think of like you know I I want my Acme database right and that Acme database has a special type of of of, of interface that you want to act on and these are the custom custom APIs that you're defining in a custom composition and the part that is like the general theme of of how we are we're looking at the world and how our customers the commu cross plane community is looking at the world and what is exciting about like is that you know as as Victor has said right we have you know you're coming with you're most likely not starting on a greenfield. You most likely have something already, right? 
And this is something where, um, you know, we're, we're going to talk about today is part of this, this provider uh, ecosystem is actually we have a special type of provider and it's called provider Terraform. Um, and there are other providers. Uh, there's a provider Ansible, for example, um, and there's other kind of like utility providers. But today we're going to focus on provider Terraform and what provider Terraform allows us. Uh, and we're going to walk through this um, uh, uh, or Yuri uh, and Nuno are actually going to talk about it. Um, is like how, how to get the code in there and how to run it and how to actually transition from one to the other. But the important piece is like, you know, we what we are enabling here is building these, you know, these, these, these cloud platforms, these internal cloud platforms, as we call them, with existing code, right? And um, I'm, I'm, I'm generally excited about this because what it allows us is to reuse code. And if you think about all the projects, all the transition projects that you are working with, right? There's always this, you know, long road, right? Of things that you need to do, right? And it's important to have like stepping stones in there, benches that you can rest on because you know there's going to be some other initiative coming down the road and you might pause a certain journey, right? So I'm, I'm you know, really, really excited about it. I provide Terraform to reusing existing knowledge and code for, you know, using different ways of migrating, including existing knowledge and existing organizational units, which we're going to learn about later. And you know, take a rest um, on this beautiful bench that Dolly just just created me for me uh, half an hour ago. Um, so, so with that said, um, you know, uh, I'm I'm handing it over to Yuri, I guess, um, or back to Victor, and he's going to tell you a little bit about like what this provider Terraform is actually about. Yeah, it goes straight to Yuri. He's the he's the Terraform provider master. Knows everything about it. So, Yuri. Tell us what's what's going on. Why do we have uh, Terraform everyone. provider? Yeah. Uh, so hi everyone. I'm Yuri. I'm principal solution architect in Upbound, and I'm also one of the maintainers of Provider Terraform. So I should be sharing my screen. Please interrupt me if I'm not. Uh, hope we're all good. Yeah. Uh, so Provider Terraform. Uh, why we created it in in the first place? So. Uh, first goal is pretty straightforward, to be able to run existing Terraform code on top of Kubernetes uh, as a uh, workspace managed resource uh, uh, as a part of cross plane resource model. So, but uh, uh, this ability to run Terraform code is very useful by itself, but we also uh, uh, can utilize the cross plane power of uh, putting um, stable uh, consumable API in front of your Terraform code and uh, include this uh, Terraform workspace managed resource into a composition. Uh, community and customers uh, identified and provided feedback by uh, several main use cases of provider Terraform. So one is uh, fre pretty frequent and uh, a quite obvious one is uh, uh, automated uh, mitigation of a configuration drift. So basically, you inherited by design a Kubernetes style reconciliation loop behind provider Terraform is going to uh, run your Terraform code continuously and converge uh, your infrastructure to a desired state. Uh, as Matthias mentioned, uh, you probably already uh, have some Terraform uh, code base, and uh, it is frequently not easily transferable to cross-plane native uh, abstractions. So uh, Provider Terraform allows you to hook into existing Terraform code, Terraform code models and code base into cross-plane world. And we have a, a nice uh, segue to a GitOps process. So you can uh, use a workspace with a remote uh, source style point to your existing uh, Git repo, which uh, that has a, a Terraform code. And uh, in this scenario, provider Terraform will act as a GitOps controller on Kubernetes side and will pull a new Terraform configuration for you and apply it to the target environment. And there is some uh, uh, interesting use case for advanced cross-plane users uh, uh, and mm, who are actively waiting for observer-only resource uh, coming in. But before they will be implemented in a core cross-plane, you can hook in uh, Terraform workspace with a Terraform data source and pull in data from existing infrastructure and enrich your composition and mix in with uh, uh, cross-plane native resources. So uh, I want to demonstrate 
an actual transition demo uh, uh, of uh, and things that you can do with a provider terraform. So before I jump into the CLI, uh, maybe like a small layout of what we are going to do. We're going to take existing uh, sample Terraform code. We will create an abstraction and an API uh, uh, interfacing with it with, uh, with the help of cross-play and XRD composite resource definition. Uh, we will include the uh, Terraform code within, uh, into the composition and we will gradually migrate to a fully cross-play native scenario. So let's do it live. I'm switching to my console and before I do so, I uh, will show you a GitHub uh, view of it. It's a part, this example is a part of official bound provider Terraform. Uh, it uh, resides under example transition, so it can clone at any time and write it on your site uh, later on and try it yourself. So everything is open source. So first thing first, we want to uh, uh, just run uh, the existing Terraform code uh, with, uh, with a crossplane. Uh, let's do it right away and uh, uh, let's investigate what we actually instantiated, right? So it's a, a kind workspace of a, a official provider Terraform TFO bound IO API uh, group. And uh, we have a, a source type in line and we just embedding uh, the um, Terraform code in line with YAML just for demonstration purposes. It's a, like a simplest mode of uh, uh, execution and uh, running Terraform code with workspace. And we have a variable within our, our workspace and we parameterize it with a specific variables, right? So here we are just propagating from a, a VARS uh, array the VPC name and we instantiating the VPC and associated subnet. That's pretty straightforward. So we can, uh, uh, after instantiation, get this workspace as any other uh, Kubernetes resource. And we can uh, make a describe uh, of it uh, and get a standard event stream, right? So it's all, it's all ready. And we can double check uh, on a in AWS UI uh, console uh, that we have uh, VPC instantiated, we have subnet instantiated, associated with this VPC, and everything is uh, uh, acting according to scenario. So our Terraform is already running uh, uh, with a cross plane on top of Kubernetes. Let's actually emulate a horrible configuration drift, right? So let's change the name and see what happens. So we emulated it by manually uh, changing the configuration in console. And after some reconciliation loop, it should mitigate it. While it runs in background, I want to show you an alternative way of executing uh, the workspace and it will be a remote source, right? So I will not instantiate it just to show you the configuration. So we have a source remote and we just pointing to existing Git repo. And this Git repo uh, contains uh, the same Terraform code, maybe this is just a standard Terraform layout, right? Uh, according to the ter Terraform configuration files. And in this case, we will just pull it in and also parameterize with the works, exactly the same style. So it's, it's more closer to production environment, the production scenario. Uh, but for the uh, sake of this demo and uh, to keep everything in uh, on the same page and uh, uh, changing the configuration as a single YAML, single set of YAMLs, uh, I will stick with inline, inline example. So let's check if our configuration drift was mitigated. And it was. So we uh, changed, uh, we did nothing and controller changed the uh, configuration back to the desired state, uh, mitigating the drift and changing the uh, name uh, tag on the VPC to our desired, desired scenario. So that's a bare bone uh, managed resource of uh, workspace, which is capable to execute uh, any arbitrary Terraform called Terraform model, and it is already parameterizable. What we can do with this uh, uh, ability next? So utilizing 
if you get back to the our plan with the slides you will see that uh, 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 we probably want to create a control plane after out of our terraform code using the core cross plane cap capabilities so let's try to define interface first Sorry, Yuri. Let let yeah. me just in, uh, interrupt sure. you for a second. Uh, I like to kind of pause for a second here and uh, go through the reasons why would we do this in the first place, right? You mentioned indirectly that just by moving your Terraform manifests into Crossplane, we are getting continuous drift detection and continuous reconciliation. And also, I, I'm not sure whether you can think of other benefits uh i can think of some like integration with the cncf ecosystem this could already be managed by let's say GitOps tools like argo cd flux right we start at this point we already have the benefits uh that we typically associate with applications running in kubernetes right uh connection with the ecosystem drift detection reconciliation GitOps, and quite a few others right so this alone yes. is already providing certain level of benefits and justifying the reason for getting to this stage. Right, totally great point, Victor. So what we want to achieve as the next stage, uh, so we already have like this abstraction, right? In the workspace, we can parameterize it. So it's some form of API. But what we want to achieve most probably with the cross plane power is to have a, a very special abstraction like in this case, we are abstracting away implementation completely. We will create a special uh, custom API. And what our platform consumers will see is this example subnet, right? Which is, by the way, it is our very own API group as well, which we will create for our special infrastructure, our, our platform. And uh, we are abstracting the whole implementation away. We are providing as many minim minimalistic spec as possible. And our customers, our platform users, will see only uh, what is to the left instead of uh, implementation to the right and the implementation of an associated composition, which we will show in, in the next stages. It will be only uh, uh, something that platform builders will be exposed to and they will configure it on their side. And the consumers will be just consuming very minimalistic, effective uh, and efficient uh, interface, which is going to be consistent. And we also will be able to evolve implementation of uh, the logic behind the CPI on the platform build builder side without uh, unnecessary exposure of implementation details to our customers. And on top of that, we also can uh, integrate the stuff like RBAC and uh, namespace based operation and uh, all the goodness that we have with a standard Kubernetes object uh, uh, by abstracting it uh, with uh, uh, composite resources and composite resource definition. Does it make sense? Answer your question? It pretty much does. Thank you. So we actually can, thank you, Victor, we can actually transit to the implementation of this specific uh, API, right? So this, uh, this is example of the claim uh, that uh, is going to be uh, uh, exposed uh, to our customers. So how we can implement it? First thing first, we need to uh, extend the existing API uh, with a thing called Compositor source definition, which is part of the core cross plane capability, XRD for sure. It is very close to idea to standard Kubernetes CRD, customer source definition, same style of API resource schema, but it operates in a, a cross plane resource model. And uh, here we are defining a set of composite resource like X subnets and a claim names uh, just subnet. So X subnet is a, is a cluster scoped resource and subnet its namespace proxy. So we are able to um, separate it by the team's namespace, et cetera. So let's just apply this definition and uh, cross plane controller will pick it up and it will uh, create a set of uh, CRDs for us dynamically. So I just got a list of CRD standard CRDs, and we see that it's already created a composite resource, a composite resource, and a claim resource for for our consumption. So the uh, API is already defined, but nothing yet implements it. So 
we are done with stage first we created the uh, custom api and now we can create a special composition that we will run uh, our terraform so here's a composition i will actually instantiate it quickly and we'll run the uh, uh, associated claim in background and we'll explain what is actually happening that's it so so we created a composition which actually defines the composability of uh, resources and we creating an implementation behind the uh, defined api so here what we did so it's a composition it's another core capability of a cross plane what we did we just put the workspace inside the composition and we provided a set of patches to propagate uh, the values from the our custom api to uh, the underlying workspace resource so if we look into on the left pane we, we have a spec vpc name and we are propagating it uh, to the uh, underlying terraform variable of workspace resource and this way uh, we are controlling the vpc name exactly the same uh, style as we did before but now it's totally abstracted and we are also uh, um, dynamically propagating the status uh, field of the xr uh, with dynamic IDs. so let's uh, let's check the status of this subnet right so again we can uh, uh, interact with our claim our custom api as a as any standard kubernetes Kubernetes object, and we can also get them managed uh, managed resources underlying uh, that were created by this composition by instantiation instantiation of this claim associated composite resource and uh, invoking the composition logic. So we can see that workspace was created. So currently, it's exactly the same as it was before. It just abstracted, and uh, uh, we. Uh, we're encapsulating all the uh, abstracting all the logic uh, with a simple API. We can super quickly check if it's did the job. Sorry for that. Authentication uh, session need to be updated, and we back to VPC, and we see the provider Terraform demo. Therefore, it is instantiated here now in a fully abstracted way. So it's already good. We created pretty much a control plane out of our Terraform code. What if we want to uh, uh, take a next step and move to the cross plane native resources uh, and to slowly uh, minimize the Terraform footprint in our infrastructure? So, what we can do is uh, move to the uh, next implementation i will apply it as well and uh, a claim in background and while they instantiating i will uh, explain what is happening so here we define the, another composition for exactly the same api the api stays the same and we uh, took out the subnet uh, configuration out of Terraform code, leaving VPC only. And we uh, amended the composition with a cross-plane native provider, AWS uh, managed resource of subnet. So by the way, you can find it here in our amazing marketplace, right? So all, all the associated uh, definitions and documentation. So in this case, we are running two resources. One is still a workspace TF, so partial Terraform code, and uh another part of the composition is driving the cross plane native so we can uh, check what is happening there so it, it is not yet ready but we can already uh, try to investigate what is happening underneath So we, we, we are asking for um, managed resources that are controlled by this specific claim. And by the way, this label 
is dynamically set by a controller. So it's very convenient in our kind of ops operations. So in this case, as expected, we are running workspace TF and a subnet. And exactly the same uh, scenario uh, was deployed on a AWS side, but now we have a um, uh, we, we pretty much uh, partially migrated to a full cross plane. Uh, 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 cross plane native resources and we kept exactly the same API. So if we come uh, compare the initial one and the current one, nothing changed for our customers, for our customer consumers, right? So it is exactly the same spec, uh, VPC name, and what we changed was only composition selector. That's it. So, uh, and uh, in a uh, real scenario, you can switch like default composition. So even composition selector can be uh, not exposed to the customers. And the labeling is set as a standard Kubernetes, uh, standard Kubernetes way. So it's a very nice integration. So, so currently, Yuri, yeah? Uh, yeah. Quick question. What are the advantages or reasons uh, for doing this? Why not stay with Terraform uh, fully uh, wrapped in crossplane? So in this Why case, would somebody get... move to cross-plane native uh, resources? Yeah, another great, great question, Victor. So in in this case, we are starting the transition to cross-plane native, meaning like we have a dedicated reconciliation loop per resource, so they are pretty like reconciling asynchronous way. So and uh, you you uh, uh, you're reducing the foot, uh, terraform footprint, uh, which is, for example, we can see here. We reduced it in double in this even in this simple uh, demo scenario, right? So basically, we are trying to reduce the maintenance of underlying HCL code and move to the very uh, straightforward declarative abstractions uh, that are produced by crossplane. And necessary, it is uh, usually it is more performant and uh, uh, and more granular, right? Because whenever we migrate, uh, I will show it in an, as the next stage. We will uh, have a, like a resource by resource granularity and associated uh, dedicated reconciliation loop per resource uh, instead of whole Terraform model, and it will make, it makes system uh, much more resilient when we switch to this full cross-plane native way. Among other things, that means better visibility into the actual state, right? Because now I can start asking questions like, hey, what are all the VPCs running in my system? Yeah. And things like that, right? Or subnets in this case. Yeah, yeah. We can, uh, what, what is happening with the subnet, right? As in something went wrong. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it brings multiple advantages over uh, different layers. Yep. Very great point. So, and speaking of uh, these advantages, now as a next stage, we can uh, uh, migrate to a full cross-plane scenario, reducing uh, Terraform footprint completely for this demo. And I will instantiate yet another composition and another subnet claim invocation and we will explain what is happening. So here, as you can see, we switching to a, a fully cross-plane native implementation uh, using a standard provider AWS, uh, dedicated resources of VPC and subnet, and we using standard uh, controller references. So we don't need to use the status for ID patching and we basically reducing the um, uh, uh, the amount of things we need to care about. So it's just a cross-plane based uh, implementation. And again, from a consumption perspective, it is exactly the same API. Still if you see names, your customers are happy. They probably don't even know that you uh, got rid of Terraform uh, behind the scenes, right? And to, and just to uh, emphasize, the the, uh, the next scenario is also totally valid, right? So you can run at uh, uh, run the in mixed mode for a while, assuming your underlying Terraform models are complex and uh, hard to migrate. So the beauty of it is that each stage is already useful. So uh, we can get the plane again 
uh, we can uh, check our claim native it's all true and uh, let's check the underlying resources right to support our case what what it did create right now yep so not here from workspace anymore it's a vpc and subnet and uh, everything is successfully deployed and uh, as you noticed we didn't touch this definition at all we just transitioned over the uh, different versions of implementation with the composition underlying implementing the api so that's probably it for the live demo and uh, Again, we transferred through all the stages from uh, Terraform code up to cross-play native. We demonstrated a very useful uh, cases in between, especially mixed mode. And uh, um, just to uh, recap uh, uh, the, in, uh, the importance of uh, stability of the API with XRD, right? So we, we went through all the stages. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, facade API was, was stable uh, all the time. It was just a subnet for our customers with a simple spec, and we only changed the underlying uh, composition, the implementation, and gradually uh, migrated to a, a full cross plane native scenario. And that concludes my demo. Thank you so much. Back to Victor. Thank you. I was about to say, shut up, you're over your time, but uh, we <laughs> yes. did it somehow. Uh, now, that was a demo from Yuri. Uh, what we're going to do next is uh, listen to Bruno because he's no, Bruno. Did I say Bruno? Nuno. Uh, sorry for that. Anyways, uh, he's been uh, using Terraform uh, provider in production in the company where he works uh, for a while now. And uh, it would be great to see and hear his experience uh, in a real world scenario. Thanks, Victor. Thanks for having me. So I'm Nuno from Millennium BCP. Um, uh, I work um, mainly in uh, cloud compute automation and observability. And for those who don't know Millennium BCP, we are um, the largest uh, private bank here in Portugal, started in 85, always uh, focusing on innovation. So for instance, most of our customers are now digital customers using our mobile apps and so on, despite us having 1200 branches uh, over three countries. But being innovation focused, we started this automation journey for infrastructure three years ago, rounding it. And we started with Terraform as many people. And three, words, three, three years of work put into it meant that we uh, now have a module re registry with 70 modules, around 140,000 lines of HCL code custom providers, multiple targets, so public and private cloud providers, multiple tools around Terraform. And we thought, this is cool, but now we want to move on. And moving on meant that we needed to find a way to move this pattern that we have used to build our automation, which is basically Focusing on abstracting our IT services, we're not we're not doing uh, oh let's uh, do uh, S three bucket in automation. That's for that for us is a building block uh, in the bottom of it, and we want to compose those blocks into abstractions that take care of all of the concerns of some. Uh, IT service. So, for instance, in storage, this would abstract uh, authorization, backups, connectivity, and all of that stuff. So, typically, somewhat complex implementations that we needed to move on from. Why? Because we feel the need to align our 
dependencies lifecycle with the app. So our goal here is we deploy an app, an app manifest, and the infrastructure dependencies just happen. And if you decommission an app, if you delete it from the environment, dependencies should move along just as well. So these typical topics about configuration drift, continuous compliance, and because it's Kubernetes, using common Kubernetes tools for policy, for security, for observability, all of these were things we wanted to get going on our infrastructure as well. So of course, you know, first selecting what we wanted to move first, we focus on application dependencies, as I was saying, focus also on greenfield to start with, and then going into migration patterns. And of course, basic rules for this migration. And so we said things like, uh, first thing we need to do is have that standardized contract, that standardized API that Yuri was showing. For this abstraction, it's these four variables, no matter where it's implemented. And then making sure that from now on, we are going to represent that in cross-plane as well as support legacy uh, implementations in Terraform. With this, then we followed the pattern that you was describing. So for, first thing we moved were uh, custom providers. So we needed to expose the same custom provider logic to cross-plane. So Terraform custom providers were also implemented as cross-plane custom providers. And then, okay, let's do the IT service abstraction first to get that composition in place. Let's do some nested compositions for what we have as common patterns that we reuse across multiple compositions. And of course, try to reach a pattern for each one of these IT service abstraction stacks where we have end-to-end -end visibility of control plane resources, control plane loops, and the right management patterns in place using cross-plane. But of course, what this roadmap brought us to were in many, many of these cases, um, challenges for what, for the patterns we had implemented before. So typically we did not end up in the same pattern we had in Terraform, of course. Some things were upgraded, some things were um, broken up into the two different things and so on. And we talked a lot about a, a, a common set of topics. One, app dependency, uh, for instance, network. What is the, the app, uh, the trigger to deploy a subnet, for instance, or is it the other way around? Um, all of the multiple ways we have to manage uh, secrets. Now, what's going to be deployed when? App dependency life cycles were really something that we, at, at, at a couple of points, we had to stop and think about them. Also, despite our push into Crossplane, we'd still do things in Terraform. And the ACE API provider is an example of something that we still use because it's in an R&D environment, we do stuff there. So we need to, to get a sorry to put these two side by side in, and not have clashes in terms of life cycles. So one of the things is maturity guides. We will not go into V1 beta 1 status in a resource type, type on both on Crossplane and Terraform without making sure that implementation is in place. So even do we even though we have R and D, we have tests, we have labs, we have all of that. Okay, that's the first maturity gate that we have. And of course, because we had legacy brownfield then we certainly hit a set of migration challenges. Complexity is one, as I was saying, three-layered approach. We have some Terraform modules that have over 1,000 lines of code in there. There are a lot of dependencies, expectations, choreographies, and that's always a challenge. Those multiple maturity levels need to be thought of and managed. 
as well as the multiple development cadences that come from this. So, because imagine we we have Terraform modules that are still alpha. Okay, that's cool. But how do we align these up? Now, making making sure of the maturity curves that we want to support and how we're going to be doing what in Terraform and in Crossplane, writing it out, getting some ground rules on that, that, that was important for us. And of course, Terraform has some specific things like data source, the observe only pattern here in Crossplane. Terraform has functions. We needed to see how to implement the same business outcome with Crossplane without using Terraform functions and that sort of thing. And then we get into users because we may set up all of this and be technically sound, but okay, people will stop writing HCL or, or referencing Terraform modules. They, they need to be comfortable with writing custom resources and instantiating, instantiating those resources for Crosswind. So training was certainly a thing. And then this thing between eventual consistency, which is a Kubernetes typical uh, expectation, then going down to a common line and saying TF apply, for instance, that is, a, is something for people to think and adapt. And of course, now that we have configuration drift, we have configuration drift. Now people needed time to understand what was happening, what was touching the resources. But with all of this said, our goal and we're really pushing forward and we are getting there and it's really valuable for our IT business is now that we've coupled applications and dependencies, we can spin up an application anywhere and go through all of the application lifecycle quickly, but securely with the right automation in the right place with right observability for all of that process because we just focus on the application and the rest just happens. And because we're focusing on those patterns, now we got abstractions, now we implement abstractions. We really don't have to copy paste bits of Terraform codes. And because it's Kubernetes, our focus now is let's write open rules and start validating stuff, validating business. And, and for instance, in our case, being a bank, that's really valuable. So back to you, Peter. Thank you. Okay, uh, that uh, that was four of us: me, Matthias, Yuri, Nuno. Uh, we have a couple of minutes left for questions. I see that uh, Matthias and Yuri were hard at work answering some of your questions. Um, and before we move into questions, the few minutes we have left. Um, I must warn everybody that we will not be able to answer all your questions. Uh, we don't have enough time. But if you go to the Crossplane uh, Slack channel, ask a question there, uh, or copy paste the same question. If you don't answer it, we'll make sure to answer it. Uh, if you tag Matthias or Yuri or me, then even bigger chance that it will be answered faster. Uh, Matthias now commits to next two hours to dedicate only to your questions. <laughs> uh, anyways, let's see what do we uh, what do we have here there yeah the, the link to the slack uh, Matthias just pasted uh, is uh, here in the chat. So um, let's go to the first couple of questions uh, as much time as we have. So uh, let's see this one. Uh, when you're using Terraform workspace, do you mean the known Terraform workspace? Uh, I'm going to redirect this to Yuri. Um, I would say yes, but Yuri is better than me in Terraform provider. Yeah, good question. So it's, it's actually both. So it is workspace manager source like a cross-plane Kubernetes abstraction that is running underlying standard Terraform workspace. So and propagating all the uh, fields and data there. So, so if, you, if you define it uh, and say, use this storage for the state, if there is nothing in that storage, then it will start from scratch. If there is already existing state, it will take it over and continue, right? Yeah, right. I think there were uh, one of the next questions uh, in a QA and a session. So by default, we uh, starting with a Kubernetes state, so it's ephemeral. Uh, but uh, if you have, and most probably you already have some Terraform state you want to migrate in a 
uh, I did it uh, the configuration of S3, for example, in a provider config, and Terraform, a provider Terraform can pick up the remote state as well and run your, your Terraform on top of Kubernetes. So reusing the existing state is totally valid scenario. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Uh, okay, here's one from Leo. Uh, what are the effects of cross planes reconciliation cloud vendor cost? Uh, for example, vendor API calls done by reconciliation loop to detect drift. Um, is there the, do vendors charge for API uh, calls? I see nobody yeah. dares to answer. I, I'm not yeah, sure how whether they charge or no, Matthias. Yes, they do. Um, I mean, it depends on on how how you configure it, etc. Right. So it, it it depends on like how how you want to um, uh, set it up. Uh, but usually, yeah, it's it's a it's a, a combination of the number of of resources that your reconciliation, the number type of API, um, um, and the frequency. But that these are all knobs that you can tweak um, if there's any any problem with it. Yeah, and uh, there is a recent addition in core crossplane. You can pull, put a so-called pulse annotation on specific managed resource. In this specific case, it can be workspace and pause the reconciliation loop for a while if you like to. Okay, um, from Neil, question, uh, does it work with the uh, Terraform CDK? Like TypeScript? No, I didn't try it, and CDK is not very actively. Uh, this integration just exists, but I'm not aware of its, uh, its status. So I wouldn't bet on it, let's say. <laughs> OK. Um, from Jakub, uh, in, Terra, in provider Terraform, is it possible to pass the credentials file to Azure RM provider block in provider config? Do you know? All right. Uh, I think, uh, Nuno, correct me if I'm wrong, we did it through environment variables in case of Azure. Yeah. yeah when we exactly. were working. Yeah. Yeah. So in case of Azure, as it like, you know, I think the limitations there, like style configuration is dictated by a Azure RAM provider of Terraform, right? And this specific provider respects environment variables and not a, not a file. That's pretty much it. Okay, we have time for only one more question. Sorry in advance to everybody. Again, go to Slack. Please go to Slack. We can continue conversation. So last question for today from Andre. Yeah, Andre, Andre. Uh, sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, Crossland project is older than cluster API, copy project. It is. Uh, by copy has been implemented. Uh, I don't think that anybody here can answer that question. Uh, why it was implemented. It's good to have different projects uh, that are tackling uh, different aspects uh, of uh, the same space. So uh, to me, that's, that's perfectly valid to have it. Um, and it looks like Crossplane already covered the creation of Kubernetes clusters. Now, there is no question there really, uh, but I would like to comment that there is a huge difference between uh, Copy and Crossplane. Copy is focused on Kubernetes and Kubernetes only, right? While Crossplane is trying to cover uh, essentially everything, right? Uh, given enough time frame to do it, so uh, Copy cr cr Cluster API is great, uh, but it is focused only and exclusively on Kubernetes clusters. While with Crossplane, you can manage Kubernetes cluster and you should, but I don't know, RDS databases, uh, subnets uh, separately of Kubernetes clusters, uh, lambdas, anything really. So our goal is much wider uh, than than the goal of uh, cluster uh, cluster API. If anybody else wants to turn in, go ahead. Given once, given twice. No, cool. Uh, sorry, everybody. Uh, I think that we are at the top. Unless the organizer of this, uh, I forgot her name, tells us that we can continue and we are at the top of the hour uh, or the end of this session. Uh, so uh, unless I'm told otherwise, I will thank everybody for joining, uh, listening. Thank you. Thank you guys for uh, uh, explaining how all this works and see you in the Slack channel. Thanks a lot, Nuno. 
uh, for participating, for joining. Um, I always love real world scenarios. Uh, I mean, Yuri has made great example. Thanks a lot, Yuri. Uh, but also Nuno, like, you know, how this is applied in real life. Thanks a lot for sharing. Thank you all so much for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you'll join us for future webinars and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Cheers.